that was all done in PowerPoint and I'm going to show you how. It's actually pretty easy. Here's how you can reproduce this effect. First, find your picture. Second, make your moving cars. And third, make your blinking lights. When you're deciding on what picture to use, try to have just one or two straight roads that are the focus of the picture. So if you have any windy roads or if you have a lot of straight roads, especially intersecting each other, it becomes much harder to do this. The other important thing is to make sure that there aren't any obvious cars on the streets, and I'll show you why. The picture I used was actually cropped to avoid these exact two issues. You can see here that this, this road is sort of awkward because it's angled toward the other road and it kind of attracts your attention because it's in the foreground. And also you can see that there are very large cars here and a traffic jam of some sort right there. And you can, you can see that if you have visible cars on the road, it'll look very strange to see the cars that you're going to make zooming by while these just sit there. So that's how you choose a picture. It's the foundation of the whole thing. So it's important that it looks really good. The cars themselves aren't really that complicated to make. Here are some pre-made ones, and I'll go through how to make them from scratch. So basically, just go to Shapes and put your oval in here. And we're going to give it a gradient fill. So however you want to get to that option there. I'm in Format Shape now. Um, I'm going to switch it to gradient fill, and we want it, a radi want it to be a radial gradient, and we want it to be the one that's, that's right in the middle, the one that radiates out from the center. The left side here is going to be the center, and then this is going to be the outside color. We actually want both of them to be white, but the difference here is that the one on the right, or the outside color, is going to have a 90% transparency level. And we have our oval. And just remove the outline here so that it's smoother. So now we're just going to paste in the cars and animate them. So I'm going to drag these to the side here. I know from looking at the rest of the picture that this road here uh, goes to the left and then this one goes to the right. And I'm not even going to worry about this red road here because uh, these trees kind of make it hard to work with. I'm going to start with this one first. And as you can see the road kind of angles upward a little bit so we're going to do the same thing with these just so that they look more realistic. And now we're going to adjust the size. Play around with what looks best with your picture, but for this one, I found that a size of uh, 0.15 and then 0.4 works pretty well. So now we have our cars, and we're going to start animating them. Go up to the Animations tab. And we're just going to do a straight motion path. And of course we have to adjust it to angle kind of this way up here. Try to make them not cross each other. We want to go to the effects, to the effect options here. And for both of these we want to have, we want to take out the smooth start and smooth end. Then we want to make this 0.5 seconds. And I actually like to repeat until the end of the slide, but do, do whatever works best for your presentation. You guys can see what this currently looks like. Now, the issue is that they're still going to be moving in one big lump. The key here is to offset one of the cars by a fraction of a second so that it it kind of follows the other car and doesn't go with it at the same time. That's why we put a delay on it. Try to find a, a time that does not go easily into the duration. So we, for example, we don't want a 0.25 delay. I like to do something like 0.19 and you can see what that does. Much, much better. 
Great, so that was actually the hard part. Now it becomes a lot easier to, to replicate this for the other cars. First, before we do that, let's just make sure that this is set to um, start with previous because it's going to make our life easier later. We're just going to copy and paste these two. And we're going to adjust the motion path. We need to reverse the, the path because the cars are traveling to the left on, this, on that side. Just hit Effect Options. Just do a reverse path direction. This is your final result. And now we're going to add on the finishing touches with the blinking lights. The great thing about this step is that you can actually repurpose the ovals that you made for the cars. I'm going to make them a little bit more circular and duplicate them a couple of times to form a nice little cluster. And now I'll show you how to animate these. First select all of your lights then go up to the animations tab, choose the grow and shrink option, then go to the effect options for all of these, make sure they're all selected. Choose auto reverse, go to timing, start, start with previous, duration 0.5 seconds, and then repeat until the end of slide. Okay, so now similar to what we did with the cars, we're going to offset the timing of these by a fraction of a second. Again, we don't want to choose numbers that are going to go easily into 0.5. So for the first one, I'm going to choose 0.07. To save time, I'll just show you the delays that I used. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The reason I'm doing it in kind of a big form right now is because I would just want you guys to see what it looks like because when we make it smaller it's going to be a lot harder to see. Now we're going to go ahead and make it everything much smaller. For the picture that I'm using I'm going to do 0.1 by 0.1 and now the cluster is a lot more spread out so you're going to have to kind of recluster everything. So that's what your cluster looks like. I'm now going to paste it onto our picture. The great thing is that the animations are already embedded in the circles, so you just move them to wherever you want the lights to blink. These lights are actually sort of large, so I'm moving uh, them to this large building on the left. And then you can copy and paste more. The good thing is that once you do it once, it actually becomes easier the more you do it because you can just copy and paste. Let's zoom in to see what we've created. You can see that it looks good, but it can be refined a little bit. Let's move these circles around just a bit to spread them around evenly. The thing here is that you can be as perfectionist or not as you want to be. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do basically just enough to get it done, as maybe you've already noticed. And now you can get creative. You can play with the lights to be different shapes, sizes, colors. You can change the speed and size of the grow and shrink animation. You can even change the animation itself to something like pulse, appear, fade, and I'm sure others. Just try different things to see what works best. I'm now going to take the lights that we just added and paste them throughout the picture. However, for the first lights, I'll shrink them down to 0.06 for both height and width. It'll make them blend in better. I'll also increase the speed to 0.25 instead of 0.5. Now I'll copy that a few times across. Again, if you want to be more thorough, you can zoom in on that area and move them around as we did before. And for the last one here, I'm going to make it a bit more window shaped. So what I'll do is I'll make it 0.03 in height and 0.15 in width to get that elongated look. And there you go, we're done. Here's your final product. Stick something like this on the cover page of your next presentation and your slides will for sure stand out. Thanks a lot for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video and like to see others like it in the future, please comment on the video, please like the video, and let me know what other video tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again.